chapter two, <clears throat> vectors. We started with the treasure map lab. Many of you did this in your room and we had to decide which was gonna be the north, south, east and west walls. You had to pick a start, three legs to travel and a place where you're gonna bury your treasure, the finish. Let's say you start at the door to your room and the first leg is 2.5 meters north. Well, you're going to need a scale. Uh, if you were using the graph paper, you'd say one block equals 10 centimeters, let's say. Or in the case of my whiteboard, I'll be using my meter stick. So I'm gonna say one centimeter on the diagram equals 10 centimeters in your room. And I draw a line 25 centimeters long and mark it 2.5 meters. Notice there's an arrow at the end of the line. You have to have an arrow. My next leg I've chosen is one meter west. And I draw it in right after the first one. And the third leg of the journey is 0.7 meters south. And I've drawn that after the second leg. Then the question was, can you find the one leg that will take you from the start to the finish? Well, there's the start and there's the finish. How do you get from the start to the finish? It's that red line from start to finish. To calculate how far it is from the start to the finish, I think you realize that you need to draw a triangle. We would want to go over and up. You'd want to go over one meter and up 1.8 meters. The length of that line would be 2.06 meters. And we can calculate the angle by doing inverse tangent, and we get 61 degrees. We would say that the one leg of this journey that would replace these others would be 2.06 meters, 61 degrees north of west. Now, everybody was able to figure out how to do this by themselves by trying to look at the diagram. It relates to what we've learned about trigonometry. It's really nothing new here, except now we have a length of a line with an arrow. Well, these are vectors, and you've been used to using vectors probably for years. Whenever you've tried to give directions to go from one place to another, you just don't tell somebody how far to go. You have to tell them a direction. Putting those two things together is a vector. This one leg of the journey that replaces the others, well, that's a vector. It has two pieces of information. It has a magnitude and a direction, just like all of these. And this one vector is called a resultant. We found this resultant doing the Pythagorean theorem and tangent, so it's a mathematical resultant. Or you could think of it as a theoretical resultant. Since it's a scale diagram, I can check this by measuring the length of the line. It's about 19.8 centimeters, which works out to be 1.98 meters. And of course, I have to measure the angle, which I can do with a protractor on the scale diagram. I get about 60 degrees. And since I found this by measuring on a scale diagram, we call this the graphical resultant. Now there's one more way I can find that resultant, and that would be to actually go to my room, start at the door, and measure to where I put that treasure with my meter stick. Let's just say I actually did that and I got these measurements and I used my protractor to lay it on the floor and try to measure that angle. Well, that would be the experimental resultant. All three should be pretty close together. They should give us confidence that maybe the graphical is supporting the mathematical answer. If the mathematical answer is completely different, then one of the two has to be wrong. We either drew the diagram wrong or we did our math wrong. And you can check your work that way. Let's talk about how we label these angles. Let's say we have a vector that's 10 meters long and that angle is measured to be 25 degrees. How would you state that? We could say that this vector is 10 meters, 25 degrees north of east. Well, where does that come from? You have to think about putting your protractor on the paper. We're gonna start measuring the angle from the east and then head north. So we're turning north from the east. I guess it helps to look at this reading it off backwards. 
we can start here. We can turn this way. We're starting at the east and we're turning to the north. And that's how much. Well, this is only one way of labeling uh, the directions for these vectors. We should try another one though, just like this type. How would we state this vector? Well, we're starting at west and we're turning south 40 degrees. Read it off backwards. Start at west, turn south 40 degrees. Could we have stated it another way? Now think about it. Where are we going to put our protractor to measure that angle? You're going to hold it like this. So now you're starting at the south and you're turning towards the west. So it's 50 degrees west of south. This definitely takes some getting used to and you should practice it. There's worksheets and there's information in the chapter notes. There's another way of using uh, the compass to help us identify the angle. At north, the compass reads zero degrees. At east, it's 90. South, 180. West, 270. And back at north, it's 360. Well, we could use these numbers as compass bearings to tell us the direction of this vector. It's about 135 degrees compass bearings. We just start at zero and read around until we get to the vector. And we could do it the way they do it in math class. Start at the x-axis and rotate counterclockwise. If that angle is 50 degrees, we could say that the vector is seven meters 50 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. Now we don't have to go from the positive x-axis. We could have gone from the y-axis. That would be 40 degrees. And we could say it's seven meters 40 degrees clockwise from the positive y-axis. Yeah, this takes a little getting used to too, but like I said, plenty of examples in the uh, chapter notes. Well, here's an example of a vector that we've been using. It's got a distance and an angle, a direction to travel. When you put the distance with a direction, it becomes a vector. A distance by itself is not a vector. If, for example, you were measuring the length of, say, a table, it doesn't have a direction to it. But if you were traveling from one place to another and you had to tell where you were going, you would need the direction. When you put these two together, it's called a displacement vector. A displacement vector has a distance and a direction. There's other kinds of vectors we'll use. For example, a velocity vector. Let's say we were traveling 25 meters per second, 14 degrees counterclockwise from the positive y axis. This would be how fast we're going, and you would call that the speed. Take a speed, put a direction to it, and it becomes a velocity. That's a vector. Well, there's also acceleration vectors. Say we have an acceleration and a direction, and we can have a force vector. It's got a force and a direction. In general, we'll say all vectors have a magnitude and a direction. A quantity that does not have a direction is called a scalar. Some quantities you can put a direction to. Like, for example, a distance. If you put a distance with a direction, it becomes a vector. But if you have a mass, you can't put a direction to it. If something has a mass of five kilograms, it's got a mass of five kilograms. There's no direction associated with that. So it can only be a scalar. There's other quantities like that too, like time, volume, temperature. Well, let's take a look at this vector. How could we get to the finish of this vector, but only stay on the X and Y axes? We could go over and up. Going over, we would get 6.43 meters. Going up, we would get 7.66 meters. These are known as the X and Y components of that vector. You could either go straight to get to the finish, or you could go over and up. Would it make any difference if we reverse the order of these components? Go up 7.66 meters and over 6.43, 
and you'll still get to the same place. The order does not matter. We call this process resolving a vector into x and y components. Let's say we had these two displacements, 10 meters east and 12 meters 30 degrees north of east. I can do a rough sketch and place these vectors one after the other. And now we can ask, what's the resultant? Well, it has to go from start to finish. Now, how could I find the length of that line? I bet you some of you want to use the law of sines, but I think we have another idea. How about resolving this vector into its x and y components? I get x equals 10.39 meters. I get y equals 6 meters. That gives me an x component of the resultant of 20.39 meters and a y component of the resultant of 6 meters. The magnitude of the resultant is now 21.25 meters, and we get an angle of 16.4 degrees. And we would write this resultant as 21.25 meters, 16.4 degrees north of east. Just remember, there's lots more practice like this in the packets and the worksheets.